After much secrecy, the Red Bull RB19 has finally broken cover. And in this video, we're going to go from the front to the back of the car, looking at what has changed aerodynamically on the car and how these changes impact the aerodynamics on this car. For those of you that are new to my channel, I was an aerodynamicist for Mercedes for the 2018, 19 and 20 Formula 1 seasons. I now work as an aerodynamics consultant, designing race car aerodynamics kits for cars in all different classes all around the world. And this video of course comes with my standard disclaimer of we can't truly predict complex aerodynamic flows by eye, but we're going to give it a good crack. Now this particular car doesn't have a whole lot of large changes, so this is going to be quite a short video. I'm mainly going to talk through some of the things that have changed particularly around the floor edge and the impacts of that. But a lot of the other changes look like they might just be small surface refinements, just slight tweaks and things like that, which often bring a lot of performance, but don't really need new analysis from my end. Anyway, let's get into the analysis. Okay, so to start with, I've grabbed a few side-by-sides from the race just to save myself a little bit of time. And I just wanted to highlight the fact that there's not that much that's changed in the broader scheme of things. Like we definitely have a different front wing on the front here that I'll talk about. Uh, we have different mirrors in terms of we move from this sort of winged housing style more to a conventional mirror. At the rear, we have a different beam wing layout. And we've got details like small curvature changes in how the, the rear wing goes and things like that, as well as a few different cooling outlets and louvers there, move, moving from inboard to further outboard along the flank. But in general, these are all detail optimizations. They're not sort of things where I'm going to go and analyze them any differently to how the car was presented last year. So for a lot of this video, you can probably get the base briefing by just going back and having a look at my Red Bull video from last year, as well as my Red Bull floor video from last year. Now looking at the front wing, what you'll see is that this particular portion through here has been backed off compared to where it used to be. And we also have a little bit more load through the center line along here. So this portion here has all been pumped up. So we basically now have a shape where this wing comes across like that, more like that sort of shape. Obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit there. This is mainly accompanied by what appears to be a growth and crank in the second elements cord on the inboard. So I think they've cranked that through there and they've puffed up this whole area here and backed off the loading the outboard portion in general. Looking further outboards, you'll see over here that they've implemented a little winglet on the inside of the end plate. I imagine they're legalizing this much in the same way that the Mercedes winglet is legalized. So go and check out my video on that if you want more info for that. But I imagine this is very much detail work. It's very hard to work out uh, from the pictures we've got to us whether this winglet is upwashing or downwashing. But just looking at the photos that we've got, it kind of looks to me like it's upwashing, so it's the opposite direction to the, the Mercedes winglet. It would make sense that they want a different direction of vorticity here and, and a different direction of upwash or downwash compared to what Mercedes is running, uh, because obviously Mercedes has a very different style of end plate to element connection. Moving a bit further rearwards, what a lot of people seem to be talking about is the increased undercut in this particular region here. Now, I actually think this detail is fairly subtle. If you have a look at the previous year's car, which is what I have on the left, you'll see that it already had a bit of this undercut detailing. And while arguably it is more radius, it was definitely still there on the old car. And I think that one of the features that makes the undercut detailing more pronounced on this year's car is the fact that this line along here, where it curves around and back, is different and much more sharp compared to the previous year's car. Let me show you a side on view to demonstrate. If we look at this top shot, what you can see is that you've got a fairly smooth curvature there. It's quite smooth going along there. On the bottom shot, however, it comes down and then it has a much harsher corner through there. It's a, definitely a much sharper corner. So I'll wipe off the line so you can see that again, now that I've drawn over the top. But you'll see that basically this section here is a much sharper corner than this section here, which is a much softer fillet. So I think that a few things geometrically could have happened here. They could have brought this corner down here the other thing is that they could have pulled this edge up and back that way. So they've just got a more aggressive downwash there is one potential option there. But it's, it's really hard to tell from the pictures that we've got what's actually specifically changed. And then of course, this could be exaggerated by the fact that they've probably taken that inboard face along here and just pulled it that little bit further inboard to make this channel a tiny bit deeper which would of course make this look more aggressive. Now in terms of what these different things could have as an effect, 
Well, if they increase the downwash in this region here and made it come down more aggressively, they could be potentially increasing the pressurization here. Now, as I've discussed in a lot of videos, increasing the pressure here can increase the downforce uh, on the floor. It can increase the downwash on the floor leading edge, which can improve suction under the floor, although we are a long way back here, but it will have some degree of effect. And also any pressure we increase along here can help with forcing the front wheel wake a little bit further outwards. Again, though, this is a fairly subtle curvature. It's fairly far rearwards. So the effects won't be enormous. If it is in fact undercutting this surface more, so cutting in more around here and having a deeper undercut through here, that could be providing a cleaner and smoother air path for the air that's coming along here and going along through here. And Red Bull did do some flow vis of this so you can see really accurately what's happening. If you have a look at these shots, what you'll see is that the flow vis starts up here, which is located just around here, and basically goes along the floor, up, curves up around the floor leading edge, then comes down around and through that undercut. And the inboard portion works its way further rearwards back here. And you'll see that it will be feeding the diffuser outboard along there. So this gives you quite a, a good idea of what's going on if you've never seen CFD of a Formula One car before. You can also make some extrapolations here too, that if that there is the, the line of that flow is coming along around there, all the air out in this particular bit over here and over here must be getting drawn out that way and pushed out that way. It's worth noting too though that you can't just look at where the flow vis paint exists and assume that's an indication of flow because for example if we trace this particular curve line along here so we follow that along there you can see it goes up through here sort of around there and loops back down that way which means that actually this paint here and perhaps even this paint to the edge here there's every chance that that was actually painted on separately. So they probably painted on a bunch up here and then they also have painted all the floor here. So just because there's flow vis in this region, it doesn't mean that it came from that particular area further upstream. They could have painted here and here and here to do that bit further upstream. And then this wider bit was actually painted separately. So just bear that in mind when you look at flow vis and always try to trace the lines. The reason I showed this one with a degree of confidence is because in this particular case, I can see the origin lines going up around along here and then down around and up here. But the real thing that's changed on this car and the thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is actually visible in this shot, which is the new floor edge wings. Let's have a quick discussion about that. Now, last year, Red Bull ran a, an interesting setup. When it first came out, it was quite different to all the other teams. And I do cover it a, a fair bit in my Red Bull video. But basically what happens is that it comes along and they've got a, a bit of the forward floor that basically kicks up. And towards the end of the season, they, they run a, this gurney section along here and gets extraction from, from here. And then it basically cuts in using the one cutout that they're allowed on the floor. And then it starts low and then ramps back up again before cutting back in again and then staying straight along legality as it goes further rearwards before cutting in. They needed to do that to legalize the floor. And like I say, I discussed this in my previous Red Bull video, but I think the intent was always quite clear on what they're trying to do with the flow here is that they're trying to really maximize the, uh, the upwash and the expansion out from this region under the floor. So they're really trying to maximize how much they're extracting from this region here, and that will improve performance in the forward floor underneath just over here. And now this year, what they have is they have a different approach that looks a little bit different, but is still going for the same overall intent. They basically use the forward portion of a floor edge wing just through here to allow them to create a little flap element that can help with the extraction of this floor region. Now, usually speaking, having a flap here instead of a, a gurney will be more efficient from a loss perspective, will be a cleaner approach. And they can basically maximize extraction here in much the way as say something like the beam wing does, where this element is a tiny little wing that will generate a bit of suction on the bottom here. So they'll have suction there and there, and they'll be basically improving the extraction of this whole area on the floor here and here, and improving the suction in the fourth floor. Now it's worth noting these are fairly small details uh, on this car. These aren't enormous details, but they obviously would be beneficial with respect to improving the extraction of the suction the forward floor and also cleaning up the losses versus a gurney setup so that anything that goes downstream from here into the floor further downstream would be a lot cleaner. So this is quite a clever use of the forward portion of the floor edge wing. Now, speaking of the floor edge wing, Red Bull didn't run a visible floor edge wing last year because they were using a device that was commonly referred to as the ice skate. Basically, it was a strake underneath the floor around about here. 
that I explain a bit in my Red Bull floor analysis video. So they're only allowed one floor edge wing. So obviously to have this long floor edge wing that's now here in this year, they had to ditch the ice skate. Now, some of that may be a function of the new floor edge rules where the floor edge has to be a bit higher, or maybe they just developed into this solution and found that was a bit better. But basically what they're doing here is that apart from the, the front bit, which I just described, they're now splitting this floor edge and filling in basically the outboard portion with floor edge flap. It was before just an open cut where we now have floor edge wing. And by putting the floor edge wing in here, what we can do is we can keep their geometry up here where they have that cut out further upstream and then proceed to go and kink in and be further inwards here to legalize that cutout, but still maintain overall plan form on the car by having the floor edge wing come out to legality on the outside so that we are basically using up the available plan form that we're allowed to use within legality and we're not sacrificing plan form in order to legalize a cut up here. Another advantage of this solution is that I'd hazard a guess that their inboard edge where their split is here is probably in a very similar position to where their edge was last year, which would mean that the vorticity uh, would be quite similar as a starting point from last year. Obviously it'd be shifted outboard a bit by the extra vorticity along this edge here, but it wouldn't be an insanely radical departure. Now, now in terms of how this floor edge slot works, I go into it in a bit of detail in my McLaren video this year, but basically, we're shedding vorticity across two edges. We're still bleeding in a bit of uh, clean mass flow from above the floor. And this will roll up into a structure further down the diffuser that will hopefully be a little bit cleaner and perhaps better position than if we just shed off a single hard edge of the floor. And what you can see in this flow viz that we've got here is you can actually see where that mass flow is starting to go into the slot. You can see if you trace these lines along here, you'll see that the mass flow is all going in that way. And over here as well, you'll see that it's all coming in that way. And that's all air that is basically going around through the slot and will turn into vorticity underneath the floor. Well, that's all for this analysis. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next from me. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.